Hi, I'm DJ Greer. Welcome to Live Big. Today, get set to go even deeper in our communion series. We are going to learn how communion can take you to the next level. Let's dig in. Jeremiah starts off in verse 31. He says, behold, pay attention. Watch this, because I'm about to say something important. The days are coming. God was saying to Jeremiah that what he is or where he is or right now is not all there is. The good stuff is often on the other side of the hard stuff. We kind of have to fight through the bad days to get to the better days. You kind of have to go through it to what? Get to it. You know, I kind of define patience as, as delaying what you want now for what you want most in the future. So he said, Jeremiah, again, right now is not all there is, says the Lord. We don't worship a God who created, let me just pause here. It says, says the what, Lord? Jeremiah was not written by an academic. It wasn't, wasn't written from an ivory tower. This was not theological commentary that, you know, he just wanted to expand his, his hermeneutic, if you will, and, and he, he just wanted to apply some, some principles and maybe it would catch on with, with people. But littered throughout the Old Testament, we, we see this phrase, says Yahweh, says the Lord. And back to my point. We don't worship a God who created the eye but cannot see. We don't worship a God who who created touch but cannot feel. We don't worship a God who created the tongue but cannot speak. God has not lost his voice. And he'll still speak through nature like he did with Moses at the burning bush. He will still speak through circumstances like Jonah in the fish. He still speaks through wise counsel like to Rehoboam, though he did not listen. And he still speaks through conscience like he did through Elijah on Horeb, the still small voice. But mostly, above every other way, he speaks to us most typically through the scriptures. Like Daniel, who wrote Daniel 9 because he had read Jeremiah. Some people get upset with me. Why are you always in the book? Why are you always preaching? There ain't nothing else to preach. You hear what I'm saying? And if your revelation is not coming from the word, I'm not interested in it. He said, behold, pay attention. Watch this. Everything that's going to be is not yet. That was true with Jeremiah and it's true with us. The days are coming. There is a, a coming of the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? The days are coming, watch this, when I will make a new covenant. Now listen, Jesus one night didn't get bored and over a cup of wine with his disciples decide that, I, you know what, I'm going to come up with a New Testament. That, that Moses stuff's getting old, you know what? That, that Abraham stuff, you know, a little passe. That, that Noah stuff and that Edenic stuff, you know what? I think we need something new. No. On that night, Jesus mentions something that had been prophesied and studied in the Old Testament for over 600 years. God's people understood that a new day was coming. They understood that God would not always deal with them based on what he did at Sinai. He was about to choose another mount. Pay attention. 
it would be the same God, but a different relationship. Now, even today, many of us still relate to God based on Mount Sinai. But Jesus came so we can relate to God based on Golgotha, Mount Calvary. The days are coming. This is Jeremiah. Hadn't he heard about Jesus? This is a guy with curls going down his face, steeped in the law, probably a little box on his head, dressed in black. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not, pay attention, not, I'm going to disabuse you of any notion that's going to be like where we've been. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. The new covenant would not only be new, but it would be unlike the previous covenants. And sometimes you got to give up what has been to become what you want to be. You see, I was my wife's boyfriend till she promoted me to husband. Pay attention to what I'm saying. I had to put away being a child before I become, could become a man. The, the Old Testament God is the same as the New Testament God. We just have a higher level of relationship because we come to God based on a different mountain, based on a different hill, based on a different work, based on a different set of circumstances. Tell me I'm preaching good right here. Tell me I'm preaching good right here. In that day that I took them by the hand to lead them out, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing that God will lead you into that he can't get you out of. Anybody, God, y'all going to get me distracted and I'm going to take up too much time. But I had a friend tell me, he said, you know what Exodus means? It means to exit. He says, it's my favorite book in the Bible. Because it's a whole book dedicated to showing us how God can take you out. Pay attention to what I'm trying to say this morning. In that day, I took them by the hand to lead them out. Even if God got to come down and personally take you by the hand, he will get you out. He'll get you through it if you let him. Out of the land of Pharaoh, 400 years of cycles and pain, 400 years of being less than, 400 years of struggle, but God came down, took them by the hand to get them out of the land of Egypt. He held my hand. He dried my tears and dared me to face my darkest fears. You see, it's the thing that, 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 that I insist on holding on to that I lose. But it's the things I place in God's hands that always turns into so much more. And you can hold God's hand even in Egypt. I don't care how fierce or how bad your Pharaoh is. If you would just trust his unchanging hand, take him by the hand, and he will get you out. If you let him, 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 if you let him. If you let him. Give me a few moments to unpack this. He said, my covenant. I mean, I set this up. Which they broke. He's talking about Sinai. When you read Deuteronomy, 
you'll see that the Mosaic covenant was a conditional covenant between God and his people. Meaning if you do that, I'll do this. If you do this, I'll do that. Let's take a look at it lest you think I'm just talking. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 through 2. Now it shall come to pass, if, condition, if, 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 you diligently obey, 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 obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe all, not just a few. That's why I don't understand folks under the law today. They following five laws thinking that, you know, they, they, there's 610. And the law was like glass. You don't break a piece of it. If you brace the, the smallest part, the whole pain is broken. So I, I don't understand some of the weirdness going on with people. And they, they got six of their, their favorite laws and, and think that, that, that based on them observing that law, they're going to have a relationship with God. You ain't read your Bible. And even those who could read Hebrew, even those who God spoke to in their vernacular yeah, yeah, yeah. could not keep all of the law. So how are you from Southeast? How are you from, from Woodbridge? So, To observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today. It was a suggestion. It's the commandments. That the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. This covenant, again, was based on Israel's obedience. The problem is humans don't listen. The problem is people don't obey. And that was the whole point of the Mosaic law. God had to show his people that they don't measure up. Based on your merit, you can't step to me. You're going to have to kill some. They're going to have to be sacrificed. You got to understand who well, I am holy. And beside me, there's none other. You can't just step to me. Like you, 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 you just step into, you know, uh, Fred over there. So he wanted to show the people how desperately they needed a savior. So they'd have to kill all these animals to be reminded that a sacrifice had to be made. A debt had to be paid that they couldn't owe. I mean, they couldn't pay. So every time a lamb died, a bull died, it was a reminder, y'all ain't keeping it. And it had to happen annually to remind people of their sin. And my Bible says, for all have sinned. That means it happens in the suburbs, in the city. It happens with the rich. It happens with the poor. All have sinned and have fallen short. I'll tell you something, if you're trying to jump over a cliff, you miss it by an inch, you're dead. And you might get further than me. You might be better than me, but you miss it. We all need a bridge over trouble. Well, pay attention to what I said. We all need a savior. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of our God. So don't you dare try to step to him because you observed three commandments this week. Some of us may sin more respectably than others. Y'all pulling on something right now. But who wants to be the best sinner to go to hell? Pay attention to what I'm saying. The law condemns the best of us. <laughs> but God's grace will save the worst of us. We have a better covenant, a better testament. We come to a different mountain. Jeremiah 31, 31. 
600 years before the Last Supper, just what Jeremiah said. He said, the days are coming, folks. When I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Now, we started this series saying to understand communion, we must first understand covenant. Why? Because Jesus... is not Baptist, Episcopal, Come on, Come on, Presbyterian. Sir. Jesus is not even from this century. He's from a different time, a different space, and he was Jewish. And what we do is we kind of impose what we do now on what he did then. But I want you to listen to what Jesus says. He took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new, in case you get a little bit hungry in the middle of one of my services and need a snack, I'm providing no. This cup is the new covenant covenant, covenant, covenant. What we call communion, Jesus called binding, irrevocable, unchangeable, irreversible. It was a no matter what happens, covenant. This cup, it's not even, we can think today of a contract but I've been in enough contracts. You get a good enough lawyer, you hear what I'm saying? This was something even stronger than a contract as we have been studying. This is something that you participated in oaths, meaning if you you violate the terms of this covenant, may the gods curse you. You know, not only may I watch you and you watch me, but may God watch between. The two, that's the covenant. This is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for, pay attention, you. Which was shed for who? You. Meaning, Jesus didn't need a new covenant with God. We did. Jesus didn't have to die because he sinned. He died for our sins. The ninth element of the ancient covenant that we're going to, is not, I didn't go in any special order, but we're going to cover the ninth very, very quickly, and Jesus just spoke it, was the selecting of a covenant representative, a person that was chosen to represent the larger group. So if my tribe wanted to get in the covenant with Tim's tribe. And here's why people got in the covenant. Let's say my tribe was really good at fishing, but his tribe was really, really good at agricultural. What I want to do is connect with somebody, pay attention, that can help me in my weakness. See, you, you, you get religious when you read Bible verses, when I'm weak, you are strong. But when you understand covenant, Verses like that take on a whole different flavor. You see, the reason I got into the covenant of marriage with my wife is because she got something different than me. She could produce things I can't produce. She brought to the table things I can't bring to the table. You understand what I'm saying? And it was the difference. And it was the fact she's strong in places I'm weak. But pay attention, I'm strong in places she's weak. And together we became strong enough to raise a family. And if two agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done by thy Father which art in heaven. There are covenants to be had on the earth still. I can't do everything. I don't have to be good at everything. But if I'm in relationship with you, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. 
I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you, dude, this for you. I'm representing you on the cross. Adam couldn't do it. As great as Moses was, he couldn't do it. He died on Mount Nebo. David couldn't do it. Daniel couldn't do it. Job couldn't do it. But behold, the Lamb of God able to open the seal of the book. Pay attention. So, C.S. Lewis said it best. He said, so the Son of God had to become a man to enable men to become the sons of God. This cup is the new covenant, not signed in ink, but blood, which is shed for you. Now, we've already covered nine features of an ancient covenant. Let's review. Number one, there had to be two or more covenant parties. Number two, there had to be covenant promises. Number three, there had to be covenant sacrifice or a covenant sacrifice and often plurals, more than one animal often. Often there was oaths or or the blessings and the curses that uh, were released during the covenant. There was the walk of blood and we covered all of these. The exchange of gifts, we talked about David last week and Jonathan. The exchange of names, the covenant witnesses and We talked about when you read in the Bible that that the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. You you need to understand that's covenant language. He was a witness to Calvary. He watched as the Father offered the Son. And he lives and he testifies with us today that it happened and its results are real. But let's move on. Then number nine, there's a selecting of the covenant representative. But I want to spend the, the rest of the morning unpacking this last piece, which is the covenant meal. Typically, right after the covenant was cut, there would be a meal. And many times that meal consisted of bread and wine. Matter of fact, the bread and wine was so important and such powerful imagery Without blood being shed, we studied this just last week. It was in passing, though. Melchizedek came to Abraham with just blood and wine, and everybody understood what was happening and what was being said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. The challenge for us is we eat loaf bread. As I get older, I've learned to eat Wheat bread with the little seeds falling out. I mean. (laughs) But at that table, this is Passover week, and there was no yeast in the house. They used unleavened bread or matzah bread. Similar to saltines but no salt. And for centuries, the Jewish people had participated in Passover and and ate the unleavened bread. But they would not understand or really see its complete fulfillment until that night. You see, the bread was striped. You see those stripes going down the bread because Jesus would bear stripes on his back when the soldiers beat him and I'm showing you an instrument on the screen that is not the exact instrument yeah it was string like that but it was weighted with a piece of metal a piece of glass it was designed to rip out your flesh The bread was also pierced because his hands and his feet were pierced. And then a soldier came along and pierced his side. 
the bread was burnt, and you see the little burn marks, the scorch marks on not only matzah but, but saltines because he bore the fire of God's judgment in our place. And that fire was so fierce, the sun blushed from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, saying, I can't bear to look at it. It got dark over the face of the earth because of the judgment placed on the spotless lamb of God. And he blessed and broke it, and he gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is. Bread was broken because Jesus himself would offer his own body as the covenant sacrifice. He would also walk the walk of blood because after he was beaten, he carried the cross of Golgotha's hill, bleeding all the way. The blood was blessed because Jesus would die forever to redeem us from the curse. Then he took the cup. And how many of y'all could give thanks on a night like this? You know your closest people you train with. He just slept across the way. I mean, these guys slept outside together. People you shared your food with and your stories with and your pains and your hurts and your weariness and your joys with. You knew they were about to betray you. But when he took the cup, this ain't a normal man. <laughs> this is not the average Joel. This is Emmanuel. Someone you had to see it to really believe it. God had to take on flesh, become one of us in order for us to really believe what he's like. He took the cup, I would have threw it at him. But instead he gave thanks. And gave it to them. He gave it, gave it, he gave it to them. This cup could not be earned. <laughs> it had to be given. It was a gift. Hence, the starting place for the exchange of gifts. Saying, drink from it. Oh, yeah. I could think of some all y'all statements <laughs> that I might want to make, knowing what people were about to do to me, yeah. knowing that these men that swore allegiance to me were going to run and, and hide and back away from and act like I ain't never taught them how to be a man and how to be strong. He said, all of you. I don't know it, but my guess is Judas might have even been at that table. You see, the issue is not, will God save someone like me? But will someone like me be humble enough to accept the cup, accept all that Jesus died that I might obtain? The issue's not God, the issue's you and I. Many of us say, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm better than the next. Well, I've kept my 10. How about 11? How about 12? For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God 
not of works, lest anyone boast. You may be better than me, but you still ain't good enough. In the New Testament, we get to enjoy the love of the same God as the Old Testament, but through the lens of a different and higher relationship. The key to a healthy relationship with God is knowing the promises of God cannot be earned. They are a gift to be received by faith. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about a book that changed my perspective on faith. And when God stops, my favorite story was about Zacchaeus and how he didn't allow obstacles in his life to hinder his pursuit of Jesus. In the end, his actions led to a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Jesus and a changed heart. If you want to learn more about what it takes to get God to stop and address your particular need, be sure to get your copy today. My announcer is coming with more information. Question. How do you get God to stop for you and give special attention to your situation? What does it take to stand out in the crowd and get God-sized results? Find the answers to these questions and more in Derek Greer's latest book, When God Stops. This one-of-a-kind book highlights eight hidden figures from the Bible who show us how to dream, think, and live the type of life that God not only notices, but one that He rewards. Not only that, but in this book, Derek Greer shares his personal journey like he never has before. Hear his testimony and go beyond what you see to get the real story behind Derek Greer's most life-changing moments with God. So jumpstart your faith today. Learn how to get God's special attention and see God-sized results in your life. Go to whengodstops.com today. That's whengodstops.com to find out more. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Live Big. Until next time, I invite you to stay connected with Derek Greer Ministries on social media. Throughout the week, you can revisit your favorite teachings and access special videos that are designed to power you, your family, and your friends through the week. Stay tuned for more information. And until next time, live big. Connect with Derek Greer Ministries on social media to access Derek Greer's latest teachings and content. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, be sure to subscribe to Derek Greer's YouTube channel at Dr. Derek Greer VA and access his latest teachings and other content meant to power you through the week. While you're there, be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of Derek Greer's latest power pack content. Subscribe today and propel your spiritual life forward. Derek Greer Ministries is certified by the ECFA. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Live Big with Derek Greer.